it's it's been a, a, a great love in my ever since I was a little boy. You know, ever since I could reach the piano I, and I tried to get a tune out of the piano, and and my ideas of a child was to be a a, a, a band leader. You know, and because my real name is Dorsey, and I wanted to be like a like a Jimmy Dorsey. Uh, uh, you know, playing the saxophone, and that was my dreams, you know, but it didn't materialize, but they were my dreams at that particular time. So I started taking lessons on the saxophone when I was uh, 11 years old, and um, and I finished playing the sax when I was 17, when I started singing semi-professionally in the small clubs. My mother was a, a, a quite unique. Uh, she she was a beautiful lady who who could play the violin, and she had this kind of operatic voice that would um, could shatter windows and shake chandeliers, and and I think that's where I thank you, mother, for the power that I've got in my voice today. I think got from mum. Yeah, music dominates my life. It really does. Uh, I'm always thinking about about what my next project is, and um, and I'm always thinking about how you know how to change my shows and and what my next record is going to be like and the kind of music I'm going to use on it. So it really, it really dominates my life. It's a, it's a great, I mean, I love to play golf. Golf is my first, you know, I love as a, as a, as a game now. Uh, it used to be tennis and racquetball and, and, you know, water skiing but, and snow skiing. But now I just, I just, I stick to golf because there is limited time in what I do because my touring takes up most of my life, you know. And I'm always in a different country, in a different place, and it's easier to get on a golf course <clears throat> than it is to find a gym or, or a tennis court, whatever it is. So that's what I do. Uh, I'm, but I'm always thinking, 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 thinking about my music, you know, and, and with the, even with this, the song, that totally amazing song that uh, uh, I have written with my daughter. And the title has been in my mind for four years. Then all of a sudden, you know, we, I spoke to her and her, and her, her young man, and, and uh, we all three of us got together and we started to put this song together because the to everybody uses that, that expression. Oh, it's totally amazing. So, so as soon as somebody says it, they'll think of my song, I hope, you know, and say, if they say totally amazing, they say, oh, totally amazing. You know, it's a very happy song. It's a, uh, my songs, are, 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 a lot of my songs are very sad, and it relates to a lot of people, because people sometimes, you know, I like to have storylines in my music that can relate to people's experiences. And, and the, the nice part about it is, well, I feel, I feel once you've heard a story that relates to something you've experienced, it's like a release valve. It gets it gets rid of that, you know, uh, weird feeling that you might have, and it goes away because you know somebody else has it as well. You know, you're not the only one, and that's I, I think is a good point in my music. Uh, but this one is kind of up tempo and and it, and it gets you stamping your feet and clapping your hands, which is great. You know, I've recently done this uh, a tour of. Uh, the Southeast Asia, and I went to countries I never went to before. And you know, I've been in the business over the three decades. So, but man, not to go to a country is kind of unusual for a performer who has uh, been lucky enough to get uh, a, a global career right from the beginning. You know, I mean, "Release Me" was my first song, and it really did give me a global career around the world. It went to number one. And so constantly after that, people, my record companies release my, my albums all over the world. And so it gave me that wonderful experience of being able to travel to these countries, you know, and, and visiting them. Now, this Southeast Asia tour, I visited India, Sri Lanka, I've never been to before. I went to, uh, we went to Bom Bombay, which is Mumbai, and, and uh, Delhi and Calcutta, and, you know, Singapore. Hong Kong, uh, did I say Hong Kong? I did, didn't I? I go over sometimes, I've been to so many places, you know. But it was quite an experience. We did it for the tsunami benefit. And, um, and being in those countries and knowing these people uh, uh, know my music and sing the songs with me, wow, that's powerful. It really is powerful to know that thousands and thousands of miles away, people know your music and speak another language and and can still sing your music. I went into a small club, and um, it, it was a working man's club, 
and I, I was 17 years old, and I wasn't supposed to drink, but I had a pint of beer, and I took this, this pint, down, and it gave me a good feeling, and everyone was getting up and singing, so I got up and they sang, and I got a standing ovation. You know, people came up and said, who's your agent? Who's I said, I don't have an agent. I'm not a show business. But you see, I'd already started my life at that particular time by priming myself by doing things in front of the mirror or, or singing with the radio and records and things like that. So I'd primed myself and I was ready. So when this little moment came along, uh, I gave it my all and uh, they thought I was a professional. But uh, uh, I hadn't even started. Yeah, And that was the start of my career. Then I you know, I went and found out what key I sang, and I, I liked I liked what they were doing to me. I sounded give me this, and um, I never got that playing the saxophone. So, I I decided to uh, learn how to learn what key I sang in, and I started playing those little clubs, and that was my apprenticeship in the business. And from there to now, my birth name is Arnold George Dorsey. Then I changed it to Jerry, uh, with a G. And then uh, I was fairly successful in England with the Jer with the Jerry in my early twenties, and then uh, just after it came out of the service, then all of a sudden um, I got tuberculosis and my my career hit the dirt, and I had to start all over again. And uh, you know, having that it was like a, like having a dreadful disease in those days. Uh, but thank God, you know, he looked after me and he said, you've got more work to do in this world. And my life went on and, and I couldn't get back as Jerry. So uh, then I'd met Gordon Mills, who was uh, managing Tom Jones. Uh, I'd met him earlier on. We were friends before then. And um, he said, uh, I think we'd better change your name. So changed it to Engelbert and, and the rest is history. Everyone calls me Eng now, E N G E, because that's the first four letters of my my new name, and so Eng has been like with me for over three decades, and I'm kind of used to it now, you know. And uh, uh, Gordon was responsible for making me what I am because he he took this young man from Leicester and uh, made him a a world name, which was quite fantastic. And I was very thrilled with that. And he was my best friend. And then we parted company in 1976 because I felt that, uh, you know, he wasn't giving me the, the attention he was giving the other guy. <laughs> Man, believe me, uh, my, my honest opinion is that he, he liked him better, I suppose, than I, he liked me maybe. But um, for me, uh, Mr. Tom Jones is probably one of the greatest singers in the world, and uh, and um, I'm a fan, so you know. So uh, it was his choice, and I I just parted and went my own way. But uh, he was quite a genius, Gordon Mills. You're doing approximately a hundred shows a year right now. Mm-hmm. How long can that continue? And. Well, as long as the people, I, I, the, my career is, is my life. It is my life. I, I enjoy working. I, <clears throat> I enjoy singing. And while I've got that fan base out there that still want to see me, I want to keep going. You know, um, I, maybe when God calls me, it will all come to an end. But until then, I think I just want to keep going. I, I, I regret it in a way. I would like to have made a few movies, you know, and because with the performance, with the performer, you're in the minds of the people for uh, the day, for the week, or so, maybe a little longer, but, and then it sort of disappears, you know, if you do a great, great show. But if you do a movie, it's in, your, in their minds for posterity because you can keep rewatching it. You can't, you can't make that show happen again. But thank God we do DVDs now because that's the only way people can get to to see your performance uh, on a regular basis, you know. I did a television commercial over in England, and it was a, a beer commercial, and it was quite funny. You know, it was with a, a very famous comedian over there, and uh, uh, we just had a wonderful time filming it, and, and it's great, it's a great, it's, it's, an, it's another little uh, jump start in your career, and it gives you a little kick, a little lift, and 
and puts you in the in the public eye a lot more because they're seeing you a lot more and saying, oh, oh, he's still uh, he's still around. <laughs> Sometimes you don't get get home that that often, and therefore, you know, people just think to think you you disappeared off the scene. And of course, a commercial will bring you back, and a new record brings you back, a DVD brings you back, and you have to keep telling the people that you're still around. And and I try to do that. I'm a very ambitious person. That's one thing. And, and not stubborn enough. I'm a Taurus, the bull, but I, I I I'm not argumentative. I I don't like I don't like arguments and things like that. But I do like I do like people who have a, a true professional approach to life, and. Uh, I, I hate, um, you know, people who are lackadaisical and uh, just don't do things in a very, you know, slipshod way. I, I enjoy totally professional uh, approach to life. And I, I would say that I am sympathetic towards situations and uh, I am benevolent because of my charitable work. And... Um, I'm quite a loving husband. <laughs> yeah, I, and, and I love my kids, and I love people. I really do. I, I love. I love people. I love them. I and I. I don't. I don't like to be a loner. Uh, I enjoy. I enjoy being with people. You know, I really do. Performance is about you singing, and the audience listening. If you had to say something to your audience. How, how much do you appreciate what, what the, been, they've been with you for three decades? And more, yeah. What does it mean to you? Uh, well, it, mean, it means an awful lot because, you see, I've been, ever since I first started my career and uh, the first fan club began, it happened, uh, the first kind of fan club was in, in England and then the, the, that was a big one and then the big one started in New York and it just started to, you know, to spread and Every which way you turn, there was a fan club growing in, in, in this city, in another city, in another state, in another state, in another state. And, and then it started to spread around the world in Japan, Korea, and Australia, you know, everywhere, Jamaica, unusual countries you'd think, where are the, where are the, you know, how do these people know all this about me? But <clears throat> the fan base started and, and they sent out all those newsletters and that's how it all began. And to this day, I have a very big fan club base, which is, um, they, you know, they're like your cheerleaders in the audience. And they start the whole ball rolling. And, and uh, when I look out in the audience, many, many times I see faces I've seen many, many times. I recognize them. Now when I go out the stage door, I, I can say hello to them. And I by name sometimes I can name them because the fan club presidents who decorate my dressing room, they come back to see me. So when you do it time and time again, you know, you get into the habit of, Remembering faces, remembering names, and and you point them out. And say hi, hi, hi. You know, you remember their names. I say by name. In the early days, you know, I used to, uh, I used to send decoy out, a decoy out. Like uh, I, I used my my first one of my first music directors was uh, Laurie Holloway, who's a very big name in, in in England right now. You know, on television. And Laurie was my music director, and he would put a coat over his head and, and, and rush out, and they'd tear him to pieces before he gets a little, and I'd go out another door. Uh, lovely stories like that, you know. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to try to avoid the fans, but sometimes you've got an appointment that you have to keep, and you, and you can't stand out there signing a lot of autographs when you've got to go somewhere else. But I do appreciate the fact that they do wait for me, and uh, it's, it's quite an... It's, it's, quite an honor to, to know that they're that loyal that they would wait for hours for me. How many autographs have you signed? Oof, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean I've just released a book, you know, uh, my uh, autobiography, and <clears throat> I did book signing in several places, including Harrods in London, and uh, um, I sat down, I signed for four hours, you know, asking their names and this, and, and so, you know, a couple of thousand books, you know, it's just, it's hard. It's it's hard to keep writing this long name, Gordon. Why did you do that to me? <laughs> Everyone's released autobiographies. Now I I thought if somebody else writes my story, they're going to write uh, things that are not correct. And of course, you know, I've had a, a quite a quite an eventful life. I've been a, a naughty boy several times, and and uh, but 
my wife, who has stood by me all this time, you know, I think she realized it was that little boy growing up in me and, and just let it go. And she, was, she said, why don't you write the book? And it was, it, it was her persuasion that made me write the book and put everything down. And of course, she also wrote a paragraph in it, which was quite wonderful. And uh, she's a wonderful, wonderful lady. And uh, I'm very lucky to have somebody like that. I met my wife in a, in a dance hall in Leicester, and uh, at the Palladie Dance in Leicester, and she was like, just she was about sixteen, I think, and I, and I was in the, she was about to turn seventeen, and I, I and I just came out of the service, and I, um, I went over there, and I saw this tanned young girl with uh, short bubbly hair, and I, and. Uh, very bright colors that she was wearing showed her tan off. And I, I kept looking at her and I didn't want to go and ask her because I was very shy. And then uh, I asked my friend, I said, go and ask that girl if she'll, if she'll dance with me. And uh, he went over and asked her. She, she, so she said, tell him to come and ask him, ask me himself. <laughs> so eventually I did and I, and I danced with her and then boom. Can you tell us about your family? My family, I've got uh, three boys and a, and a girl. My daughter Louise is a songwriter and a singer. She sang on stage with me many times. And my son Bradley is a singer he's, and he's a songwriter. He's been on stage with me too. And I have sort of gave them that experience, you know, to come on stage and, and uh, play to an audience that is, you know, uh, that knows them by name uh, because they're my children. And they did very well. Uh, but I had to cut the umbilical cord and, and uh, say, you have to do your own thing because that's the only way you'll make a name for yourself. You know, you can't do it on my, on my coattail or anything like that. Not that I, I wouldn't want to help them a lot, but I think that's the way life should be. You should do your own thing, get, get started that way, and then you don't have to worry. You, you know you've made it by yourself, and that's how I did it, and I want them to do the same thing. And my son Jason, who is my eldest boy, he lives in Vegas, and uh, he has two children, and two boys, and uh, my son Scott lives in Australia. And at, at the beginning of uh, many years ago, uh, when I, I ran out of management, uh, he, he managed me for a few years and did very well. Um, but there again, I had to cut the cord and let him go his own way. And, um, and now he lives in Australia and doing going quite, quite well for himself. But they've got daddy in case they're in trouble. <laughs> I live on both sides of the Atlantic. Um, I live in England. I also live in L.A. It's a new place to live, and it's got new scenery. I love to live on the top of a mountain. It's just so beautiful. Living in L.A. is, is close to my work, so, you know, it's... Uh, uh, and I'm a world traveler, so living in L.A. is quite convenient, you know. Uh, but I do enjoy my home in England very, very much, and I try to get there as much as I possibly can. You know, I was in the service, and I, and I started to ride motorcycle in the service, and, and uh, I was a dispatch rider, you know, so I learned how to handle a motorcycle. So when I did and could afford to buy a motorcycle, I did. And I, of course, it was a Harley, because I, I do enjoy riding in, uh, leisurely, you know, in that, uh, and, and smelling the roses as you go along, and not you know, tight knuckles and white knuckles or just belting along, that's not me. I just love to just, just ride, and they take the place of a car. And I do that uh, frequently um, when I'm riding in England or when I'm riding in uh, Los Angeles. Cars, are, uh, they, they were important to me. And, uh, you know, when I first started to make a little money, I thought, you know, you know, you have to have many cars and this and that. So when I first uh, got successful, I started to collect uh, Rolls Royces. And uh, I had about 14 at the time of different kinds of Rolls Royces, you know, and uh, old ones, you know, um, uh, Rolls that belonged to people like uh, Pierpoint, who was a hangman in England, and also uh, Princess Margaret's Rolls and, and a few other, you know, <laughs> but that was at that time, and after a few years of them standing in the garage, I decided to 
disperse with all my, just keep a couple of cars, you can only drive one at a time. So I've got a couple of cars now, but one is a Rolls and one is a Jack. It is nice to, <clears throat> Um, to have a nice wine collection. I've been drinking wine for a long, long time. Um, it is a lovely way to spend an evening. <laughs> and uh, I, en I enjoy them. Yeah, I collect them. It's just my wife and I now. We just, my wife and I lived uh, uh, on both sides of the Atlantic together because, uh, you know, the, the children have grown up and they, they do their own thing. And um, I don't have that responsibility anymore. Thank <laughs> God. You know, but... Uh, but they, they're they're good kids, you know. They they've done well. I could have I could have sang rock and roll at the beginning because I I used to sing rock. I had a rock band to start off with. But Gordon was wise. He kept Tom Jones on uh, on the rock, and he kept me on the ballad. And because my very first song was a ballad, so it stamped my style. It got me people used to me singing that kind of music, and I had some massive hits, you know, like the Last Waltz and Release Me and and There Goes My Everything and. You know, uh, it was, it's just one ballad after another. And it was quite wonderful to be known as, you know, as a romantic singer. And love is what makes the world go round. And it had a cycle of, you know, not being so, so much in the limelight, but I think everything has a cycle that then it's come around again, thank God, you know, and the romantic songs are back in vogue. And, uh, they go out for a few years and come back again, so you have to you have to to go along with that. You know, you just can't think that you're going to stay with those romantic songs all the time. You just have to go along with it and take the the rough for the smooth. And if you don't have a hit, you don't have a hit. Just keep pumping until you do, and that's what I do. And I, I just keep pushing till till the, the right song comes along. Is that a song title? <laughs> yeah. I will say to all of you, thank you for supporting me all these many, many years and, and for being my friend. I appreciate that and sticking by me. I'll do the best I can with the tools I've got for the sake of conviviality. I got you.